OK, uh, so I just rushed out to um, introduce the other types of graphs um, because I want uh, to spend some time. Let's just go through some real world examples. So uh, I think it is very important for data visualization that we should learn from the real examples so that we know that how we can design a better uh, visualization. Uh, so the first example um, is called uh, the technology proficiency over time. Uh, so we can see the basic idea is that we have more and more people that become advanced in terms of the technology proficiency. Okay, um, so but this is a chart probably created by default from Excel. And we know there are a lot of uh, problems, uh, for example, the unequal time scales. Okay. Um, so this is a two year difference, four years difference. Um, and also uh, we have some date errors, right? It's so like this one. Um, we have the missing values, like we don't know the, the value for this time period. And also those three colors are very close together. So it's very hard to tell the difference. And so this is uh, 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 this version solves some of the issues, but still hard to compare the data. So especially that the advanced uh, category uh, has a very small number other than the others. So that line chart may not be the best choice. And uh, so this is better. So we can see that uh, in this version that they are using a bar chart. OK. However, it's still the skills are very different uh, for basic, intermediate, and also advanced. So it's very also very hard to see the trend of each of them against each other. OK, so, uh, so that is also another issue that we have. So this, this time that we have a dashboard that, that, that attempt to put the piece together in a redesign so that we to, uh, to solve some of those issues. So we can see here they put those three categories on three separate line chart so that it's easier to compare. Okay, and also easier to see the trend. Okay, and this is also another uh, redesign where we can see that this in this time a uh, uh, slope graph is used to show the percentage of the student at each proficiency level. Okay, and we also have a stacked bar chart, okay, to show the distribution of those uh, two time periods for those in two time periods. And this visualization also uh, focus on the two time periods, the line chart that saw before showing the trend of each level of the proficiency. So the message has been spelled out that more on this one so that in uh, 1990, only 20% of the employees were at the intermediate level, and only one single employee was advanced. However, in 2011, uh, nearly half of the company was at the in intermediate level or advanced. Okay, so we can see the difference. Uh, let's see another example that we, we can compare the vendors. So this is the chart that uh, to compare the vendors. So there are three outcomes, good, rejected, and also unknown. And the vendors are shown on the X axis along with all category. Okay, so we have this all category. Um, so this is the redesigned that we know the power of the ordering so that we sort the data. And we can see the vendor M has the highest rejection rate. Okay. And if we just look at the reject rate, so we put that one into this um, bar chart, so that is uh, even more clear. And also in this case, we also put all categories as a reference line, so that shows the average of the rejection rate. And similarly, so we also look at the unknown. So we create another bar chart just to 
uh, to look for the unknown cases and again we have this average reference line and now if you put them together so we can see that okay so which vendors has the most of the rejection rate and those unknown rate okay and we can also match with each other so that's uh, uh, vendor M, vendor M, and vendor T, vendor T, and also vendor T. So that it's easier to see that how uh, for each vendor, so what are the uh, situations for each vendor. So here, this there is a still our issue here. So because that is the scale, we know that uh, we have a lot of cases for rejected, and we only have a few cases for this unknown. So that gives us another revision where uh, we put that into scale. OK, so the length is uh, corresponding to the number of the cases uh, for the rejected and also for the unknown. So that we can see for the M, we have a lot of rejected and also we have few unknowns. OK, and for the vendor O, so it has actually the vendor F has uh, most of the unknown cases, but has a few rejected cases. And this is the same score, but we sorted with each outcome category. OK, so we see that vendor M has the highest rejections and also vendor F has the highest unknowns. OK. And let's see another example that where we see that uh, we have uh, the issues with bar chart. So uh, this probably is a very common issue that if you have a lot of categories okay uh, so that you will have created this bar chart and remember that this will generate what we call it a moira effect okay so we saw that in the first lecture so you will see those framing uh, um, effect from this chart and it doesn't help if you close a gap okay so if you close a gap it's just a big Bob of the blue. And if you make it very thin, it's very hard to see the where the point end. OK, so if you make it, uh, it's very hard to see where the point end. And we can also use dot. OK, so we, we can also adjust the axis so that it doesn't start at zero. So in this case, uh, we can start at 4.5%. OK, but we know that this is not the best practice. So um, we still want to start from zero. But if we want to start from zeros, uh, we it looks like we have a lot of white space. OK, that has not been fully used. Um, we also move the labels next to the uh, to the dots. But still, uh, we have a lot of white space. So those empty areas. So that is where we can use this uh, lollipop chart. OK, so lollipop chart um, um, can help us to easily see the result values and also compare a lot of different categories okay, without generating that, you know, the very uncomfort effect. OK, so this is an example that packed a full data, yet does not look at as busy as a bar chart would. And this is also showing the satisfaction rate by the state, category, and also delivered method. OK, and in this case, you can see that only the highest values in each section has been labeled to avoid additional clutter of adding labels to every dot. Uh, however, the one caution of this uh, lollipop chart is that so if you don't peer, be careful for this one, uh, so so how so the lollipop chart might be a little bit uh, misleading. So for example, if the true value is below one k, and if the dot here this dot beyond the the one k reference line, so that will be a little bit misleading. Okay. So in this case, you can see that the lollipop make it appear that number four is above re the reference line. Um, However, in fact, it should be below the reference line. OK, so that is the reason that because of this 
uh, reason. So uh, some people that they don't prefer um, this type of the visualizations. And also when you create visualizations, you have to make sure that um, the dot is uh, accurate. OK, at the exact the right position. And this is another uh, interesting usage of the lollipop to avoid clutter. And we can see that by using the lollipop, and we can see the background picture, uh, which is very nice. OK, next, let's see a problem with the scale. OK, uh, so here this is the GTA Power dashboard, uh, where we look at, if we look at the bar chart, so this part okay so we're comparing the target lines showing actual versus expected so this is a bullet graph so uh, here we want to see that for each categories so how the actual values compare to this expected uh, so some of the categories that did pretty well um, okay so if we look at the percentage However, so they also the quantities in each category are also different. OK, so that means if we scale the chart to the quantities, for example, those two uh, has the highest quantities, um, but they, they don't have the highest um, performance. So for example, for the other categories, so they have high performance, but because the quantities are smaller, so if we scale back to the quantities and we can see the, the bullet bar chart, it's hard to see. And if you scale back to the percentage and you will lose information that, OK, so uh, those two categories actually have very high, huge quantities. So you will also miss some information that for that. OK, so you can think about so if you are the designer, so how are you going to resolve this issue? OK, and so this is a solution and the, this is not the best solution. But the idea is that so we can use the size. OK. To indicate the quantities and we can use a position to indicate that the relationship between actual values versus the expected values. OK. And we also have a reference line. OK, that is stand for 1 percent, 100 percent. OK, so by doing this, so uh, we can show the relationship of the quantities and also uh, the performance in each category. OK, so that is the solution that uh, we can sh show the uh, all the information that we want.